our notes, mm. Robbie? Oh, I'm glad you reminded me. Boom! We are live, suckers! <laughs> What's going on, guys? Look at you repping that Nintendo shirt. You really are excited for that new Nintendo console, it's aren't you? Be beastie, man. It's oh, yeah. be How much are they paying oh, you to wear that? Yeah, I'm glad to you to betray your Sony allegiances, be Beastly. They, <laughs> they said they'd send me at least one GameCube disc every year. One GameCube gift disc every year. I don't think it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. You know, I got to show love to all the consoles. And I'm an old guy. Well, I won't say that because I'm talking to somebody else my own age. I'm very seasoned. And so I have a lot of love and respect for all these older, you know, older generations of games. Nintendo kind of started this thing. And uh, the Nintendo 64 was amazing. And so it, I feel... Top, top five games for Nintendo 64. Go. Mario 64... Uh -huh. um, uh, let me see. Um, uh, um, it's the only game <laughs> Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 2. Um, uh, Castlevania, um, Lament of Innocence. Um, another um in there. Yeah. Shut up, Golden Eye. <laughs> and um, oh, man. you guys fill out the fifth game in the <laughs> oh. There were two. There were two correct answers. You got them both. Mario 64 and well, Goldeneye. Yeah, those are all you need, man. That's pretty good. Mario 64. I, I, I honestly, I can't remember. I remember Cruising USA, I think, came out on that. That's about all I remember. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, 64, it was it was a special thing. I mean, it's been so many years now. It's hard for me to remember, like, a ton of the library. Killer Instinct Gold. Gold. Awesome game. Got that in the living room. No, stop it, Briar. It was. <laughs> I've been playing Killer Instinct on my Xbox One this week. Killer Instinct is still the shit. But that the new version of Killer Instinct is pretty oh, good. Man. They got a new update coming out for that with like a big single player mode in it well, too. See, the thing is, I've never really had the opportunity to get into it and start playing it. But I've been playing with Maya. I've been playing with Orchid. Uh, I've been playing with Saber Wolf, and it is really, really overhaul compared to the way it used to be. It used to be really in depth oh, yeah. and very deep gameplay. But man, what they've done with it now is just totally insane. And and when you pull off these ultras, you feel like you feel <laughs> like the man, man. It's it's a very very sick game. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's free to play too. You can just jump in and start playing with it. Yeah, the free to play version I think came with one character, Jago. But they did release the entire season one for free for Xbox One games with gold a few months ago. And you know, I get my free shit. I don't care what it is. <laughs> if it's free, it. I'm, I'm there every month. So I do have the, uh, anything the full first doesn't matter season. what it is. If it's free, yeah, I'll be, I'll give it a shot. My, uh, uh it's funny you asked that. Cause I was just looking at the PlayStation store. I was hoping my kids wanted to play shovel Knight on the, uh, Vita. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was hoping that like, maybe there was a discount. Maybe it was free this month. Like who knows? It wasn't, it's still 15 bucks, but. They just bought Shovel Knight. They were playing it today. That game is good, man. I still I haven't had a chance to play that. Yeah, now that we downloaded it for the Vita and we bought it for the Vita, I'll probably jump onto it and check it out because uh, it's one of those games that everybody was raving about when it came out. Would it come out two, three years yeah. ago? came out on, and, on the uh, Wii U, wasn't it? Yeah, it started off on the Nintendo platforms and then moved its way over to Sony. I, that uh, I think Xbox has it as yep. well. Uh, I think it's on PC as well. I think it's kind of like everywhere now, but yeah, it's always um, spread everywhere. Everybody was raving about it when it came out. I finally purchased it. It was for the kids because they wanted to play it. Um, but I'm going to definitely check it out now that we own a copy. I think it's cross buy too, so you can play it on PS4 and the Vita at the same time. Mm. Yeah, I'm. I'm excited I will have to double check that. Stuff. But uh, that's a game that has been on my radar. Uh, a lot of games that come out, I know of them. Don't get a chance to play yeah. them, especially. And Briar, you know better than anybody what it's like to have a yeah. back catalog that you just can't get to. This year, mm -hmm. I've made a real effort. I've made a real dent in a lot of these old yeah, games. Yeah, you have. I've done a lot of reviews. I've taken like the last month and a half off doing reviews. I've just been kind of going in, playing The Last of Us here and there, playing just multiplayer games, Doom, uh, Uncharted. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and now start getting back into those and, and try to clear out some of this back catalog because there's a lot of money you spend on these things. You know? Yeah. I could have yeah. literally put my son through college uh, if I just didn't uh, buy the games i haven't played so there's though that's the worst too is when you buy the game and then it just sits on the shelf far cry 4 style and collects <laughs> dust you know like I, I bought it day one excited to play it and then just for whatever reason that first week goes by and you don't get a chance to boot it up and then after that first week like that you know there's already something new out it's hard. right is there's already something new and then there's a month gone by and you're like well the buzz around this game is completely gone yeah. and you know, like there's nobody to talk about, and 
you know, then it's two months, three months, and all of a sudden it's a year. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, what happened, man? I spent spent sixty bucks on this game. I never played it. it. it what happened to me? You and I have a, <laughs> a, a lot of the Pretty people much. who watch the stream probably know that you and I have a lot in common, Briar Rabbit. We have the same yeah. anniversary. We're both hung like horses. Absolutely. You know, that was established on on our birthday. <laughs> you guys are a okay. match made of heaven, basically. <laughs> I mean, same. Much. We married our, our beautiful brides on the same day, not the same year. Yep. And I too bought a Far Cry game and haven't had a chance to play it. I bought Far Cry Primal earlier in the year. That's another thing you have and, in common. And yes, it's another amazing <laughs> parallel between our lives. Uh, I played. From, it is eerie sometimes how much how much stuff that is exactly the same in our lives. And I feel the same way about Far Cry Primal. Uh, I booted it up. I promise you, I went through the tutorial. I killed a deer and I turned it off. And I was like, this game came out like <laughs> four months ago, three months ago, and it's it's over now. Let's play something new. And it's one of those situations. And I'm sure the people watching, you guys have had these these situations occur in your life, in your gaming library, where you got something old and you got something new or new-ish. And you're like, well, everybody's playing this. Everybody's talking about this. The older game, I'm, I'm going to sit it to the side until I have that extra 40 hours in my week <laughs> to actually delve into it, play it, and, and, and see it through to completion. But I'm, I'm determined. This is going to be my year. I want to continue. I want to bear down. I want to stop wasting money. And I am going to play some of these old damn games because I got Rainbow Six. I promise you, I got through the, the tutorial and turned it off. It's horrible. Rainbow Six Siege? Yes. That game's got holding power, too. People are still playing that game a lot. Yeah. Yeah, well... well I got through the tutorial and I went to a multiplayer match. I got completely destroyed, and then I went to uh, against the AI match, and I felt much more like a man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's how you feel. Like I know that feeling. Yeah. I know that feeling pretty well. You know. Uh, I mean, so that we've been talking about old games, but there is a new game that I really want to talk about because I know this is going to take up half of this podcast. Easy talking this about this. Is this week's or last week's uh, Beastly Thoughts Game Club game? That's week. right. That's right. So we've been doing this game club. This is the second week of the game club, or well, we're going into the third week, and uh, you know we picked a couple of games that were you know older games that were free on Xbox Live or PSN. But this is a big release. It's a sixty dollar game. It came out on Tuesday. Uh, I know Robbie, you you've gotten a chance to play it. I've been playing it quite a bit. I played it a bunch on stream. Uh, Beastly, you haven't had a chance to play with it, play it, but you've read a lot of reviews for it. So. I would expect that you're pretty informed about the game anyway. Uh, let's yeah. jump into it. No Man's Sky came out. It, uh, Robbie, you played it. Is it everything you expected? Is it more? Is it less? What do you think about the game so far? Well, that's a very broad question, but I can say... <laughs> Loaded yeah. question. No, definitely. Um, I can definitely say based on my personal expectations I had going into it, you know, I expected it to be a really fun game that I put a lot of time into. Yeah. I really like the game. I yeah. don't think it's perfect. I think there are definitely things I don't like about it, but for the most part, I think it's really impressive, especially when you consider a team of 15 people made this game. It's amazing. Yeah. The fact that you can just fly in space and you can land on a planet. It's all dynamic. Like you just enter the atmosphere. You can land on a planet. You can take right off again and go back into space. That is probably one of my favorite things about the game is just flying around. And things are like you that. playing it on the PlayStation 4? Yes, okay. I haven't gotten on PC because, well, I'm sure you've heard it's pretty rough. Yeah, for some so, users, so, have definitely had some rough experiences on that PC. What, what's amazing to me is that I don't normally like games like this. I don't really like survival games. I don't like inventory management games. I don't like farming exactly. sims. You know, like I, I don't like games that are structured this way. But because of the breadth of the game and because of, you know, the space setting and being able to just fly from planet to planet, it really is a stunning thing. Like, I kind of haven't gotten used to it yet. And I put in, I would imagine, around 20 to 30 hours, somewhere in that range. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, wow. You have been playing. Yeah. Um, I still haven't gotten over how cool it is to be able to fly from space, land your ship on the planet. And then fly from planet to planet, like in oh, one seamless feeling. transition, like to actually have yeah. control of your ship for all of that. You know, in so many games, you can fly, you know, in this small area, right? You could, you could maybe you can fly in space. Then uh, in the next level, you can fly a little bit on the ground or near it. And then in the next, you know, this is one seamless, you know, huge galaxy that you can basically go wherever you want. And then when you once you get to the planet, the planet is 
relatively well fleshed out. There's all sorts of stuff to find on the planets themselves. You can find these beacons that will show you exactly where to find some stuff, or you can just kind of roam around, kind of slow your ship down a little bit and actually watch underneath as, uh, as you start seeing these things like pop up. So like a lot of exploration is possible because of the way you can fly your ship. It's very, very cool. Alien architecture exists in this game as well, right? Old lost alien uh, architecture. Yeah. There's enemies. Uh, now, one the thing enemies, here, there is enemies, but they're like, they're the same enemies on every planet. They're these sentinels. Okay. Um, so it's like, you kind of, you get over that pretty quickly. Now, and they're so easy to kill too. Like, I gotta tell you, do you guys notice every time I attack a sentinel, they just give up almost immediately. It's like, I'm trying to fight a couple of them and you know, kind of like Grand Theft Auto style. I want to see how many I can take out and survive. They always just give up. Like, it's boring. I don't know why they just don't care. So the AI the is is on a level, is what you're saying. See, oh, I was going to let it's, it's completely bad. Like honestly, it, okay, what it is well, is there's basically is, you get in trouble with these sentinels, right? Depending on what you're doing on that planet, and depending on how how aggressive the sentinels are on that planet, you can get in trouble with them. And it kind of comes in waves, where you'll kind of get like uh, three or four of these kind of floating. They look like ghosts in Destiny, kind of, and they come and attack you with lasers. They don't do much damage, even when you're fresh into the game like it's very survivable fighting these things wow. and then there's more there's another one that's kind of this uh this legged creature still a robotic creature that comes and he's a little harsher um but once you've earned the grenades he's pretty easy to handle as well uh and he moves so slow that you can very easily get away from him too uh, but once you upgrade your main it's called a multi-tool but it, it it does all sorts of things it, it helps you mine uh it helps mm -hmm. you mine faster it it helps you fight. Uh, depending on how you upgrade it, you can really start taking down the enemies very quickly. And that that there's also wildlife kind of roaming around. And on some planets, some of this wildlife can be pretty nasty uh, and pretty aggressive. And every once in a while, you'll get something that comes after you. But once you've leveled up your multi tool again, it, it doesn't. You never really feel like you're in danger. There comes a certain point in this game, uh, and it comes pretty quickly where I just never felt like I was in danger anymore. Same. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's something they should address. I, I have two questions. Well, first, let me say this. Um, I knew that today's show was going to be kind of my uh, de decision-making process was going to be based on you guys and what you guys had to say about it. Uh, there are two questions I have. As far as the uh, the animals and the indigenous life you find on planets, are they very similar? Or are you going to see tons of different types of animals I've heard two different things. I've heard that everything that you see is very similar, and I've heard people say that nothing you see is similar. Is that, what, what have you guys found? I don't uh, honestly say, say both of those are true. Uh, yeah. I've definitely found creatures that are similar, and I've found some that are crazy out there. Like, like you just see it across the hill, and you're like, what is that? Like, there are so many moments you're like, what the hell is that thing? Cause it's oh, so these things can be really alien. big, too, right? They can be oh, big. Some of them creatures. are massive, yeah. Like, I found these... Huh giant like tall deer creatures on this one planet yeah like, there was tons of these roaming animals sometimes well, there it's are stunning. there's like, pieces right and those pieces get put together i don't know in some kind of somewhat random way depending on how that planet was built um and so you'll see a lot of creatures that look kind of the same as another creature you saw recently uh, but every once in a while you do get surprised i saw a creature and i don't want to spoil it it was nothing like I'd seen on any other planet. It was gigantic. It was horrifying. <laughs> wow, <laughs> and really? I don't know if you ever yeah. saw those old Dune movies, but think, yeah. <laughs> think in that really? direction. Yeah, it was Whoa. pretty. It was pretty impressive. Um, so there, there is, there is like this building function that happens that kind of puts these pieces together and kind of creates these animals. And sometimes it looks like you can't really tell them apart. Other times. Like it does make something that's pretty fucking cool. Um, They're really stunning at times. And then really every time cool. you go to a planet, you can you can kind of use your scanner to look at them uh, and then name them uniquely. So when you enter a galaxy for the first time, you can you can name that galaxy. Then you you know if it's got four or five planets, you can name each individual planet. Then once you get down to the the planet itself, you can name all of the fauna. You can name all of the wildlife. Wow. Um, and you can. Every time you discover like a new area, it gives you credit for that. 
Uh, and then you upload all that and it gives you money so that when you upload it, like any other person that comes to that planet is going to see that you were there naming all that stuff. Although, um, with 13 quadrillion planets, the likelihood of somebody else coming to your planet seems low. I haven't, I haven't actually seen a named planet yet. Me neither. Wow. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's incredible. Grace. Oh, so now you've uh, covered one, one aspect of a question I had. Now I got another one. We, we, we're going to have enemies in this game. Of course, you guys said they're, the AI is great. How dynamic is that? Now, if you're on the ground walking around, I'm guessing you're going to see these sentries coming your way. Can you get in your ship and leave that planet? And if so, can the enemies follow you or are they all confined to that space? Also, is there space battles as well? There is space battles. The, the, enemy, the sentinels are confined to the planet. The wildlife is confined to the planet. But there are space pirates that are out there. Um, but they're not they're, they're not real there's no cohesion to them you know so every once in a while you'll just run across them and you know they'll either chase you for a little bit and try and attack you or you can fight them and again once you've upgraded your ship they don't really present present that big a problem um, you could easily take on six or seven of them if you've upgraded your ship well um, and then you, you can actually play this game without going to the the planets all that much because there's asteroids all over the place. You can farm the asteroids. There's these huge ships like giant ships that you can actually blow holes in, fly into the ship and rob them, uh, which is kind of cool. Yeah. It's a, kind of a cool mechanic. Um, I only tried that once and I got, I got beat up hard for doing it. So I haven't done it too much. I assume that once you've got a better ship, you might have a little more success doing that. If you wanted to play as a, you know, as a space pirate, I could see that being a pretty valid way to play. Uh, you may still have to go down to the planet for some stuff, but for the most part, like if you want, if you want the tool, the materials it takes to get your hyperdrive going uh, and to just travel from galaxy to galaxy, a lot of that stuff is going to be available just from farming asteroids, from uh, and from going to space stations. Um, so, like, you can, you really can play this game how you want to play it. I, I really enjoy going down to the planets and like exploring the planets because even though they're completely random, I, I don't know how random they are. They, they feel pretty random. Um, yeah. Just kind of like seeing what's down there and seeing what's kind of happened. It does give me a space explorer vibe. And when I, when I shut the part of my brain up that's telling me this is a video game. And just get into it, man. It does feel like you're exploring, man. It really does. And it's it's compelling. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so I agree. you're selling me. You're selling me. Now, the last thing I want to ask about uh, is it might be the one that matters to me the most. Now, this game is a quasi-online type of experience where yeah. you can play with other people. Now, it's really no. not, though. No. <laughs> okay, you both are the yeah. same yeah. thing. Explain that to me. Uh, and There's nothing really to explain. You're not going to see anybody. Um, they, there was actually two people. Uh, we made a video about it on YouTube. They yeah, actually yeah. they they did same go place. to the same planet. They were theoretically standing in the exact same area. And they couldn't see each other. Like they couldn't even so, see each other. So, so there is essentially no multiplayer. The only yeah. aspect of multiplayer is places that you've named and other players have named. Yeah, theoretically, again, though, since the universe is so big, I still haven't seen it. I'm guessing that as I progress my journey further toward the center of the universe, right? There's there's a few different quests in the game, which was something I was wondering about before we started. Uh, there is a, one of the quests, the main one, I would say, is to actually travel to the center of the universe. My guess is... As you do travel to the center of the universe, as you get to places, because everybody's going to be condensing down to this, you know, compact One space. One spot, yeah. As time goes on, as you get closer and closer to the center of the universe, my guess is that you will start seeing more named areas, right? Because, yeah. you know, that's just how that would work. But, like, I just don't, I don't know, I haven't done it yet, so I can't really say one way or the other. There is some really cool stuff in space, though, is there's just another Atlas quest which is really kind of fascinating and uh, gets pretty cool. Um, and I highly recommend you, you check that out. Yeah, um, the Atlas storyline has some really interesting like. But there, there are some to, like, significant, yeah, there are some, some significant flaws to this game. And even though I enjoy the game, I, I, I know that I am looking past those flaws to enjoy it. Like a lot of the planets, even though they're randomly generated, look exactly the fucking same, right? It's like, yeah, they do. You, you almost can't tell it apart from like the last two planets you were at. Uh, some it seems like some of them just have pilot swaps. 
The wildlife looks pretty much the same because it's kind of randomly generated. Those wildlife animals running around, they don't they don't look distinct, right? They don't look all that distinct. So a lot of the times you, you, you almost don't even notice them. You scan them just to get some credits and then you just move on and you look for like the, you know, the big scores of whatever you're trying to farm, like whether you're after money or you're after fuel or whatever you're doing. Um, yeah. So there is, there is like that. It's like, I would say like nine out of 10 planets. I don't, don't even stick out in my memory, but every once in a while, man, I hit some place that is really fantastic, really memorable has like one really cool animal rolling around or one expansive cave that I, you nearly get lost in. And it's, it's a game that is filled with like hours of kind of what I would call tedium. Mm -hmm. And then it's broken up by like this. Holy cow. Wow. You know, yeah. like, you get, but then you, okay, you get shocked. Yeah. You, then you go back to that tedium. And if, if that tedium is too tedious for you, if it's too much, I could totally see it. Not like in this game, if those wow moments don't hit you right, right in the no, right okay. spot, then again, it's not going to be the right game for you. For me, I really like it because I like this exploration aspect and I'm really blown away by the, the technical aspect of being able to fly my ship from planet to planet. And I, I like that, but it is a limited game. You know, you only interact with aliens like in certain areas and they're super repetitive. Like you'll, you'll get the same kind of yeah. dialogue multiple times in one play session. Um, so it's, you know, the game certainly has its limits which is weird for a game that's as expansive Limit as it is, limitless. you know? Yeah. Uh, but it, it is, it's very weird. It's very weird. Uh, okay. So you, you, you said something that made me have another question. I apologize. I'm just curious. Uh, once you find these, these planets with these wow moments and these places yeah. are truly amazing with all these quintil quintillion planets. Yeah. Is it easy for you to find the places that you've already no. been to? No, it's very difficult actually. Um, be able to find I hope that's something they add back into the game. You can you can set waypoints, um, but the way the maps work is they kind of show you your next destination, but they don't really show you your last destination, if that makes sense. So, yeah. like, let's say you found, like, a, a planet that was perfect for, like, farming all the money you could possibly farm. Uh, you move on. All of a sudden, you, bought, you see this $5 million ship that you absolutely must buy, but now you're completely out of money. Ah, oh, that's okay. I'll just go back to that last planet in that last galaxy, start farming that shit again. Oh, wait. The map just, like, you got to scroll through probably 100 galaxies to find that one. Wow. Yeah, so it's really well, difficult. And if it was three galaxies ago, forget it. Forget it. Wow. All right. So before you guys give your verdict on whether or not this game is a must-have game for people who are maybe on the fence about it, uh, what are some of the things that you maybe didn't like about the game or things that you want to see fixed? Cause Robbie, you did say that the game isn't perfect. It does have its issues as someone who hasn't played it one iota. I'm curious about those issues because that will weigh heavily on my decision-making. Yeah. As far as issues go, like, I mean, especially the first 20, 30 hours, I was absolutely loving my time with the game. Like just finding really neat planets and cool creatures. Like it's not all the time, right? Like Briar said, I perfectly, once in a while, you'll stumble across that planet and have, like, a wow moment. It's not going to be all the time. But my biggest issue is that eventually it does kind of wear thin once you've visited enough planets and en seen enough creatures. Then it's kind of like you're just doing the same things over and over again. I wish there was a little bit more because it feels a little thin sometimes going to a planet. And then I've just had it where I'm just like, I'm just going to leave. Like, there's nothing interesting here. So Okay. Uh, let me ask you a question. All right. You said 20 <clears throat> to 30 hours. Within that period of time, give me a rough estimation of how many planets you think you may have visited in that period of time for the game to wear thin. Oh, gosh. A lot. 20 to, 20 to 30. I mean, are we talking 100? Are we talking 500? Uh, I don't know how long you're on a planet. 50 to 100, I'd say. 50 to 100. So after about 100 planets, you feel like you've pretty much seen the extent of the gameplay loop. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's still more to discover out there. I'm sure I'll find. There's definitely planet. more to discover. There's more, yeah. but yeah, yeah, you've seen the gameplay loop for sure. Like 100%. you know, like unless there's, there may be like a story surprise once you get to the center of the universe, but and there may be like unbelievable creatures that you haven't seen yet, or you know, unbelievable uh, new, you know, new 
planets, you know, like you, ha you definitely haven't seen everything, but you've definitely seen the gameplay loop. A lot of it is inventory management. It's about, you know, trying to upgrade your spacesuit so you have more slots so you can carry more shit so that you can make more money so that you can upgrade your spacesuit. You know, <laughs> like gotcha. yeah. same with your ship is you're, you're trying to make money so you can buy more <laughs> slots for your spaceship so that you can put more stuff on it when you're farming so that you can buy more slots for your spaceship. Right? It's like this, this loop that is just kind of, kind of constantly turning. Uh, there's basically three things for you to upgrade in the game. There's your, your multi-tool, which is your gun and your kind of mining tool. There's your ship and there's your space shoot, space shoot, space suit. Uh, space space shoot. Shoot. And they get progressively more expensive as they get, you know, bigger and bigger, right? Especially ships. I've seen ships that cost $5 million and you know, a million is nothing to laugh at. So five million is a lot. Five million is a lot, right? And millions. I think as you as you progress, you get you get access to better and better stuff as well. So I haven't even seen what's beyond that, uh, and I suspect that the ships get even more expensive. But you you know, my hopes for this game are this game reminds me of Destiny for so many reasons. Ooh, I um, hear this. A, a lot of it is the fact that. When I first started playing Destiny, I, I could see in it that it was a flawed game and that it was not a complete experience. But the base gameplay of it, I loved so much that I didn't care. I was willing to I was willing to look past its weaknesses and you know enjoy myself. But a lot of people weren't because a lot of people just didn't like the crucible. They didn't like how the game played. They didn't like the limited content that was available for uh, single player. And that's okay. I I don't I don't blame you for not you know, for not liking that incomplete, imperfect game that Destiny was. No Man's yeah. Sky, to me, feels very similar. It feels like on launch, it's an incomplete, imperfect thing, but it's doing something that I've never seen in another game do, and that alone, to me, is worth seeing, right? Like, so if somebody asked me, is this thing worth $60? I'll say, I, I would say, do you like what you're seeing? Because you're just going to see this over and over again. If, if the answer is, yes, I like what I'm seeing then maybe you do want to pay $60. Maybe you want to wait till this game is $40 on a sale. Uh, or maybe you just want to see how they update this game and how they improve it because they've, they've talked about like being able to build bases and uh, adding multiplayer functionality and adding more things to do in the galaxy. And that may be what most players are really waiting for, right? Is you bought the game. Okay, I had some fun. I had 20 hours of fun. I had 30 hours of fun. Ultimately, it's not deep enough to really keep my attention. I like the core systems. I like how you can explore these planets. I like how you can fly to space stations. But the shooting kind of sucks. You know, it's really imprecise. It doesn't feel good. Uh, farming, yeah. like how many fucking rocks can I farm? You know, like... That got kind of boring too. Right? So, Just, like, yeah. as you kind of see that, maybe, maybe you're interested, maybe you're not. I find it really hard to recommend this game to anybody who's not like, you know, head, head over heels in love with what they're seeing because yeah. the gameplay loop in itself isn't something that's super attractive to me. What's attractive to me is just the exploration and the fact mm -hmm. that te technically it's so impressive. Agreed. Yeah, yeah completely. Well, uh, it sounds like this is something I'm definitely going to be trying. I, I truly uh, trust you guys uh when it comes to your reviews and your thoughts on games like this um i honestly think that a game like this would be able to hold my attention if i didn't have a million games to play yeah that's the other because thing it's kind of, a long haul struggle. commitment be game because yeah. because of what you know kind of what robbie said that ever lingering question of what's out there you feel like you're really in space and even though it's all procedurally generated nothing is truly ever going to be the same and those wow moments for people who maybe only have one or two games, they're going to spend hours going from planet to planet just to see what they can see. And the prospect of a never ending, you know, kind of universe is, is really amazing. The yeah. technology behind this game is really amazing. So I'll definitely give it a try. I'm happy you guys bought it and enjoyed it. So I didn't have to, uh, <laughs> but it's, it sounds like at some point I will uh, in, in the near future. I want like if this thing goes on sale, beastly, it, it's a no brainer, right? Just yeah, technically absolutely. to check okay. it out. You know, like yeah. even if you have no nothing, intention of playing like more than 10 hours of it, just to check out the technical. There's nothing like it. No, there's nothing you know, like I, it. Nothing yeah, like I've it. Seen a a few, I've seen a yeah. few. I've probably watched maybe 10, 10 minutes of the game yeah. total. 
And I've seen the, the seamless uh, transition from space to the atmosphere to, to hovering over the planet. You see the ground, then you slow down, then you start to drop. And I'm like, holy shit, this is incredible. Yeah, uh, just it is. Just that aspect alone, that's something that you'll never get. At. Well, you probably will at some point now in the future. Uh, but this is something that's been unheard of in the gaming sphere yeah. up until this moment. What so I, the technology is really amazing. What I'm really looking forward to, and this is kind of, I, I almost regret saying this before it comes out of my mouth, is I'm looking forward to No Man's Sky too. I'm looking forward to the people who can rip off this technology, but put mm -hmm. like this awesome kind of Star Wars-esque saga oh, into this man. universe, right? It's that like put nuts. a story in here, put like characters you care about and put, you know, like all of that stuff into this engine and then we we got something that's going to be like imagine if imagine if you had this this engine but also had the mass effect engine kind of in there as well kind of like yeah so you had the oh, mass effect oh, story oh, and the mass oh. effect characters but you know you, when all your space flight happened and like your exploration happened with this engine when you had to go to a planet to mine resources this is how you did it right if you had to go if you had to go to a settlement to like to you know fix a labor dispute in Mass Effect, you had to you fly down to the planet, find that settlement, land there, and then you it's go crazy. out on foot and you do all your your stuff in Mass Effect. That's what I'm looking forward to. This game is an amazing technical way, yeah. achievement, but I'm what I want is like the real game that we get from this technology. I mean, in my mind, right, and I'm a dreamer. I'm a Pisces. Um, I see something like this, a space exploration game with multiple teams constantly writing and developing for it. Like you said, there's multiple galaxies in here. Imagine if you got multiple teams writing stories for different planets and different galaxies, and it's really like this living universe. And every time you go someplace new, you find a story, a story that maybe no one's ever played before. That kind of stuff is really intriguing to me and the possibility of what this technology is going to become. It's here now. This actually yeah. happened. So we're not going to step back. The only thing we have to do now is, I guess, take this algorithm that they've, that they've developed, uh, improve on it, and make something more incredible. I'm really happy about the, the future of games like this. And you just really made my mouth water with the whole Star Wars and Mass Effect analogy. Right. That's like, how cool would that be? Because like, it doesn't have to be 13 quadrillion planets for yeah. a Mass Effect game. No, it could it be 100. And you, the fact that you can fly between them... You know, and do all this oh, stuff and explore man. each planet like this, that would be phenomenal. And if there were real written stories, like each one oh, of these man. planets had like a backstory and oh my god, you'd play that game for a thousand hours. Forever. Forever. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Different races. Like they could just keep adding to it. Or if they had like a MMO on this kind of a in this kind of a space, oh, that would be insane. Yeah, and the important thing to remember too is that this game is not done either. Like, there's no. going to be a lot of updates coming to No Man's Sky. They're already talking about adding base building to the game as well. Which as... I don't even understand how that works. Cause right? Like, cause we, what are you going to build a base and then just leave it there? Like, <laughs> you never no go back. To find it? Yeah. <laughs> Do you like put a black hole like next to your base and then you can like from any black hole you can get back to your base? <laughs> oh, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Game? Speaking of black holes, I was going to say, Briar, have you been through a black hole yet? Yeah. The black yeah. holes are in this game? That was really yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind what? of a spoiler. I should have probably... <laughs> Shh. We'll, we'll, we'll move you know, on. You want to be very careful so... of black holes. Yeah. <laughs> Just like that's in real cool. life. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of kids if you don't. You know, you gotta, I you mean, that's care. not a wrong analogy. So, yeah. <laughs> oh Careful my black holes. Uh, yeah, right, there's. So I mean, there's some really cool stuff in this game, and you know, it, it's very like if somebody says this game looks boring. I say then you're probably not gonna like it, man, because like what you're seeing yeah. at any given time is like half of the game. <laughs> if you think it's boring, don't buy it. Yeah. Simple as that. You do not have to play this game. But even if, if it's not for you, that's fine. Even if you don't like the game, right? The the tech in here. I can guarantee you is going to get picked up by other companies. I hope they, I hope they just sell this engine. Like that's what I hope they do is just sell it. Whatever well, Hello Games did is brilliant. Yeah, like it's so good. From from what I've I've heard, and of course I didn't get too deep into the actual uh, the, the intricacies of this story, but Hello Games was uh, under litigation. They were actually being sued by uh, the person who actually developed the algorithm for this game. And this is something that's been going on for a long time. Really? And they 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 were going to uh, postpone the game indefinitely a few months ago, but they I guess settled out of court. 
Good. But the person who, who created the algorithm was real pissed off because they came in there and kind of stole it from. Uh, I remember this that story. Entity. They stole yeah. it from the entity and then they they used it for their game. But I'm happy it came and uh, I'm happy it went and uh, here we are now. So we got a little bit of news uh, for this week. Robbie, you want to get us started now that all yeah. the No Man's Sky glory is over? Yeah, uh, just quickly to close off No Man's Sky, I'll say I think I would recommend No Man's Sky, but I think I re- recommend it to very specific audiences of people. What, like I think, it, give me that audience. What audience are you are you talking? I'd to? say if you're into definitely yeah deep space like exploration. If you're a sci-fi fan at all, like if you're a fan of survival games, I think you'll be able to get into it. Like kind of, uh, it's a mix of all those. I think it's worth a recommend. Not a strong recommend, but I think it's worth at least, um, you know, giving it a shot and seeing what you think. Okay, Robbie, this is a test for your age. Who does this? Leonard Nimoy or whatever. Well, actually, I'm saying the actor. Did you just say Leonard Spock. Nimoy? Spock. Yeah. Okay. Leonardo Nimrod, I believe, was I his, name was. his given name was. It's Spock. Yes. <laughs> oh, wasn't, job, that, wasn't that the guy who made those books about how to raise your babies? <laughs> oh my God. Hey, I said both answers. You know, I got bonus points. I said the answer too. I, I don't know what to expect from you, Robbie, anymore, man. That's not what I expected to hear. But you were somehow right and wrong. You could have said the host of In Search of, and I'd be like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, good, good job, Robbie. Uh, that different. is that is the Vulcan race, and I, I am a nerd. Vulcan. All right, so now that No Man's Sky is over, what do we got for the people? All right. First news this week has to do with the uh, Xbox One S. It says the recently released 2TB Xbox One S has been selling very well. Very well. Going out of stock in most retail stores, and yet Microsoft has no plans to replenish the console at this time. Because Microsoft sucks. They said, we're going to give you something good, and we're going to cut that shit in half. All you get is a bag of dicks. Yep, no Xbox One S for you. The 2TB Wait, Xbox... I'm sorry. Say that again. They're not going to replenish stock? No. 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 They have no plans to to release or manufacture any more Xbox One S's with the two terabyte. Oh, okay, yeah. They had said right off the bat that was going to be a limited edition. Okay, yep. yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're still going to do the five hundred gig and the one, and the one terabyte. Yes, that's fine. No problem. I mean, it, the thing is, like with the original Xbox One, you actually void your warranty if you upgrade it. Of course, you can do the yeah. You just put an external on it. Yeah, external. But some people don't like that stuff. Like my PS4s are all two terabyte. It feels good, man. It feels real good. Okay. <laughs> first time. <laughs> I don't even remember. I'm so old about the first time. I, I'm not buying the two show. terabyte because I just think it's wildly overpriced. Like, so I, yeah. I'm kind of waiting for the one terabyte or the 500 gig to come out. I, yeah. I'll probably buy the 500 gig because I have no problem putting an external drive on it. Uh, I, I don't I don't really understand buying the two terabyte version. It's, it was I've, so fucking expensive for a I've, fucking three year old console. Yeah, <laughs> I literally got like ten terabytes of hard drives sitting in my living room. So I'm good yeah right. <laughs> right. External hard drives are falling off of trees around here. It's like yeah man. <laughs> There's a, the guy on, on my corner used to sell dope. You see him now. He's got hard drives. Open right? up his coat. Yeah. Hey man, you need that 500 gig, brother? You need know, that, that USB 3 drive? You need USB 3? Yeah, I got that 3.0. Three, I, got I got Thunderbolt here, right here. I got Thunderbolt right here. <laughs> the shit is I have cheap. no idea what you're talking about, but okay. Let's <laughs> I have no idea. Don't worry. You know what, Robbie? When you get older, you're going to meet unsavory characters, and you just have no clue what they're going to be selling. That, right, that's so- good news for Microsoft, though, that they flew off shelves as fast as they did. That is a compelling yeah. product if you have a 4K TV, especially because they right now are selling the cheapest Ultra HD Blu-ray player out there, right? Easily, this is the clear choice. And they're about yeah. to drop the price by 100 bucks. Yeah. I mean, and, and this, yeah. is all, yeah. this has all been good. This has yeah. all been good for, for uh, Xbox. They they won the month of July. You know, the original Xbox was flying off the shelves because the price dropped to two fifty and under. Mm-hmm. So people who were, you know, on the fence about adopting the eight generation consoles, they saw that price and everybody went out and bought that shit. That's great, man. So That's yeah, good. Yeah, I shit. mean I was I was one of the guys who didn't think that was actually gonna happen. I thought it was gonna have the opposite effect, if you guys remember. Uh, when they started talking about the uh, the Xbox One S and then the Scorpio, I thought that was going to confuse the market. 
people were not confused. They said 250. I saw an Xbox a One player. But look, games? I saw yeah. an Xbox One on Amazon with three games brand new for 230 bucks. I was like, God. You know? I will say this, though. I do think there is some confusion in the marketplace. I've heard a lot of people confuse the Xbox One S with the Scorpio, not really understanding that the Scorpio is another console that's coming out next year. And I yeah, can't that's... imagine people being upset that saying, oh, what the fuck, man? I just spent $400 on an Xbox One S a year ago. Yeah. That was a brand new console, and now you're going to bring out another brand new console? I can see people getting upset about that. I think that's going to happen. I think next year is going to be an interesting time for the – the late adoption for sure, of the Xbox. For sure. Do we have any PS4 Neo news? We sure do. Speaking okay. of right. Scorpio. Because <laughs> I didn't want to bring story. it up unless we had some news. <laughs> Sony is Sony is holding its own PlayStation event on September yes. 7th in New York. And rumors suggest that the event will be the official reveal of the upgraded PlayStation 4.5 or the PlayStation Neo. Dude, it's I am happening. hyped for this. I am really it's excited happening. to see what this is going to be. Woo. Is it going <sighs> to be the... You know the upgraded processor and graphics card that we expect it to be. Heard about? It, are they gonna Are they gonna downgrade it to be just like a a slim version, like a like put an Ultra HD Blu-ray drive in there, like the Xbox One S, or you know, like are they gonna react to the Scorpio? Because I think that's got to be forefront on on Sony's mind right now. Is like yes. Scorpio is yeah. gonna come out, and if they're tr out there trying to sell a PS four point five. And Xbox has like a brand new fucking thing out there, like that puts a lot of pressure on Sony. Unless unless Xbox One Scorpio is out there selling for you know nine hundred dollars, then you know, that's something. It's going to be expensive, man. It's going to be a five hundred dollar console at least. Uh, I paid more than that for a console. Sony, yeah, yeah. looking in your direction. <laughs> fucking <laughs> launch PS3, <laughs> motherfuckers. Yeah, that was over <laughs> like nine hundred dollars. Didn't wow. it? You kind of did. Yeah, you know. Um, in a perfect world, I would like to see Sony release two consoles. We know it's not going to happen. You know, I, I I think that I don't know shit, man. I don't know what the fuck Sony's going to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you never know. There, there's rumors going around that they're going to release the the upgraded version of the Vita. As crazy as that is, you know, uh, they what? they've released some documents. I'm just telling you the news. No way. Some documents have been released uh, with a, a new chip. The chip is very reminiscent of the old PlayStation Vita chip. The numbers wow. actually side very similarly. There's two chips, uh, and they they actually had um, uh, they they basically said that anyone who got this information had to not speak and had a non disclosure agreement for 180 days after that. So this is all new information. Information I just got yesterday. It's kind of crazy. Uh, one is similar to the PlayStation 4, and one is similar to the Vita, and it's out there. I think that Sony needs to be focused on this new Slim because every console gets a Slim console. It yeah. has to be a PlayStation Slim, that's for sure. But that Scorpio is scary, you know. And, that's and that's a year who, away, right? And if yeah, yeah. if this was PlayStation's big move, because remember, going into E3, we're like, PlayStation's got all the cards, Sony's got them all. What the fuck is Microsoft gonna do? And now it's like, <laughs> man, Microsoft just pulled out four aces, threw them on the table, was like, "What's up now, motherfuckers?" <laughs> Yeah. Surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> yeah, that's what they did. It's it's really scary. You know that the, the, the executives at, at the PlayStation division, at least, are, are really flipping their shit. They gotta plan for this. PlayStation is uh, Sony's number one way of positive revenue. That's how they yeah. make their money. Everything it's else a big is deal. Failed, and and they've got to hold on to that market share. And and people want the best. And when Microsoft came out and said this is going to be the most powerful console ever made, the best that, pixels ever. Yeah, the, you know, the ground shook, and I'm sure that the people at Sony were probably shitting their pants like, oh, no, people are going to hear this, they're going to want this. they got to find a way to combat it. Uh, and, and I guess we'll find out exactly what they're going to do. And on the 7th, we're going to find out if this is going to be the competition for the Scorpio or if they're going to plan ahead for something next year. It would be crazy if they do. It would be nice if they kind of met somewhere in the middle. All right, let me, let me ask you guys this. Imagine this, right? Sony comes out with the PS4 Neo that we all expect to see. The one we expected to see at E3 or before, you know, we heard rumors about before E3. Yeah. Next year, Sony announces, or I'm sorry, Microsoft announces at E3, okay, here's the Scorpio, here's the specs, it's coming out this holiday, holiday 2017. But at that E3, Sony says, yeah, but next year, we're going to double that. <laughs> <laughs> like, imagine if we got in this, like, two-year cycle of fucking upgraded systems. 
Then, Can you then, imagine? Like, like Scorpio 2. You know? That'd be fucking horrible, wow. man. That'd be awesome. I mean, because, what are you talking about? Because they'd all be, be backward compatible. So the games the games you bought for the Scorpio are going to work on your Xbox One, right? So, yeah. And I assume the same thing would be true if because so, everybody's using this PC architecture now. So you can just keep upgrading these things and just keep getting better and better and better. And if they got on this like fast up, upgrade cycle, like all of a sudden it's like, well, fuck but, it, man. That, like that, if I'm gonna play Destiny, I want to make it look as good as it can. Ooh, yeah, bitch. but in, in, in my eyes, that leads to a really dangerous place, right? And and the reason I say that is when you have new hardware, you want to see that hardware used to its fullest capacity, to its yeah. fullest potential. Yeah. And when you, when you when you have new hardware that's playing older generation games that have been up res. Yeah. possibly run at a higher frame rate. Like the first so, year of every console generation. <laughs> yeah. But if we do this every two years and it's still backwards compatible, all these are super powered backwards compatible machines and developers won't be focusing on making software specifically for the new hardware. And it kind of flies in the face of the new technology. But this is the way six- this is the way PC gaming works now, right? It's like you buy a PC game for your current PC. When you upgrade your PC, that same game you've been playing is going to look even better, right? It's the same yeah. game. You already bought the game. Uh, just depending, like the more power you can throw at these games, the better they look. Some games come out and they they can't even run at max max settings on current PC hardware, no matter how much you spend on it. You know, you just got to wait till the next. You know, they're they're kind of future proofed a little bit. Uh, and that you know that's all done by you know having like magnificent hair effects and you know <laughs> like maximum and shaders colors. and maximum shadows and you know awesome water and awesome weather and like all these effects right nothing that's actually core to the gameplay just cool looking shit <laughs> you know cool looking hair right yep. you, you you turned me around Brian that makes a lot of sense and and that does sound really really exciting. I don't know that I can afford to buy a console every every two years. (laughs) Jeez, you know the one the one stick in the ointment here. Yeah, (laughs) like Jesus, it sounds like it's going to be be expensive. (laughs) Buy the Xbox One Scorpio, right? You spend five fifty for it, and then you know a year later they announce that the Xbox Scorpio Two will be out, and it has you know ten teraflops. You're like, fuck. I'm going to have to create a brand new bank account just to put money away for all these. Like, wow. Jeez, I wish it was that easy. Famous. If that was, if it was that easy, I'd have twenty bank accounts. You yeah. gotta create that fucking. Incorporate money. your YouTube channel. Start start <laughs> writing this shit off, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's tough. It's exciting. Now, I want you guys to give me your predictions on what you think. If you had one prediction, what is it going to be uh, on September seventh with Sony? I think it's going to be what we think it is. I think it's going to be the the system that we were hearing about before E three. You don't uh, think they changed anything? I don't think they did. I don't. I, I'd like to think they did, but I don't actually think they did. I think it's going to be, you know, more powerful than a PS4, but not nearly as powerful as the Scorpio. Uh, it's going to be the hot system for a hot year, you know, for a good year. It's going to be the most powerful thing out there. Um, but when the Scorpio comes around, it's going to have some real competition. Yeah. Competition. I think it's going to be. You guys think that uh, Neo still comes out this year? Or are we looking at a early next year? Probably? And it, I kind of think it's coming out this year. That's uh, what I'm feeling. Along too, with the it. along with the PlayStation headset, but man, that September release, that September announcement, it doesn't give me much time to turn around on that. But I could, I can yeah. see. You know, maybe they do the September. Is it the seventh or the ninth? Seventh. 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 They do the September seventh announcement, and they say, you know, the thing will be out on October first, or you know, like that. Uh, but I, if you better get there and pre-order that thing in a hurry because oh yeah, you know that supply is going to be limited on that thing. Especially with PSVR too. Like people will be buying that just with it. Like that's going to be nuts. Yeah, I'm looking oh, forward shit. to PSVR. I'm excited. You just got, oh man, <laughs> PlayStation VR. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm excited for that too, Beastly. Oh, I, I really it's am. Be so good. Uh, did you pre-order one? You pre-ordered two. That's right. The money just has to, it has to come from someplace. Right? It comes from a tree you plant it in your backyard. You just plop a bag of money off. I was actually just talking to my my boss for the photography. I'm like, I'm going to need a few extra hours. This is. is yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be an ex- yeah. expensive year, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, this is how I did it, right? I got all my kids together from the 15 year old to the three year old. They uh-huh. sat, started they pimping them out. The no, not yet. Oh. <laughs> well, hey, free idea. That one's on me. Yeah, the girls aren't. <laughs> right. So look, 
I sat them all down and they were eating their lunch and, mm -hmm. and, and they were like, Dad, what do you want to talk to us about? I said, You guys look at me, are you enjoying your lunch? And they said, Yes, sir. I said, well, that's the last one it? you're getting. <laughs> I, 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 I said, What is it? They said, It's ramen noodles, chicken flavor. I said, Well, for the next four or five months, this is going to be breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I hope you guys enjoy it. I love you, okay? But we're going to have PlayStation VR. Oh, my God. Those poor kids, when they go to college, they're going to be like, oh, I'm sick of ramen. Like, what the fuck are you going to eat then? <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very exciting time right now, guys, out here on the gaming landscape. Sony and Microsoft, there's a lot of shit going down. It's really, really exciting. All right, so the Dead, Riding, the Dead Rising franchise turns 10 years old, and with that, Capcom is remastering Dead Rising, Dead Rising 2, and Dead Rising 2 off the record for PS4, Xbox One. And on September 13th, the game will be released. Each game will be individually priced for $20 or in a bundle, all three for 50 bucks. Not excited one bit about this bit of news. Fascinating, fascinating. I don't news. care. Let's move on. Oh, well. <laughs> well <laughs> I mean, some people probably really are excited about Dead Rising. I, that's a game that I just never got into. But I just don't absolutely. care about remasters. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, I, Dead Rising 3 just didn't get me either. Bethesda is absolutely looking into the possibility of releasing games for the Nintendo NX, according to Bethesda Vice President Pete Hines. What you think about that, bitches? So, first of all, this doesn't confirm that they're going to develop games for NX, but... Hey, don't be a naysayer, okay, Pete No, Hines. I'm just telling you. I'm guys, just guys, up. guys. Doom comes out for fucking everything. <laughs> yeah, you got that right. Like, I mean, I've got I've got cell phones that have Doom. I've got I mean, I don't know if there's anything that has a screen yeah, on it that, that doesn't run Doom. Yeah. Bethesda sure. owns Doom. Of course, there's going to be a Doom for the <laughs> for the NX. It's just gold. gold now they got a brand new Doom that they can put on every fucking device in your home. I got a fucking refrigerator that runs Doom. It's crazy. Dang. Yeah, I got a toaster that it's terrifying. Doom. Open it up, get some milk. There's a fucking big pink monster in there. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> Now let me ask you a question. Do you think? Morning. Do you think honestly, from what we from what we've seen or of what we heard about the NX, that it'd be able to run Doom? You guys think so? The new Doom or the old Doom? Because it'll definitely run the old Doom. <laughs> yeah, the old Doom, no doubt about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It could. Yeah, I don't. I don't see why it wouldn't run the new one too. I mean, that new one is a pretty cool engine where it, it's so it keeps awesome, its man. it maintains its frames per second, but lowers the graphical fidelity to keep that. So. Yeah, I don't see why it's not. The thing's going to be as powerful as almost as powerful as a PS4 or a Xbox One, right? Mm, yeah. So why not? We, yeah. We've kind of covered this before, uh, talking about the two players who managed to be in the same place at the same time, and they couldn't see each other. Hello oh, Games God. director Sean Murray says, uh, it could be due to network issues the game has been experiencing and that normally players would know, uh, would know in some form uh, that another player was nearby. Or... It could be the fact that there's no multiplayer in this game. <laughs> yeah. so, like, I mean, are they, are they going to say bullshit like that? I mean, does the game have it or not? He says they may have been experiencing network issues. Whenever Is I'm online, possible? whenever I'm playing this game, I almost always have a little bar that says, you know, network not connected, network features not enabled. And it is... It is believable, especially on a small game like this, that yeah. they are having some network issues. The game does run pretty well. Uh, it does crash somewhat frequently, but yeah. um, like it could be that <laughs> like those features just aren't working right now because the servers are getting o o overloaded. Or it could yeah. be that these guys are just full of fucking shit whenever they <laughs> speak about multiplayer because... <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem like there's anything in there that, that's multiplayer. That reminds me so much. Have you guys seen on uh, Twitter? There is this hilarious gif of um, like people talking to Sean Murray and like one fan's like, "Oh, No Man's Sky, you said it would have multiplayer, or whatever." And then Sean's like, "Oh, great! So many of you are playing. This is wonderful." And he's like, "But Sean, we can't see each other. This is amazing. I never expected this." And then you see him just like running out the window. It's really funny. Yeah, <laughs> like basically really... just not addressing it. It's really funny. So let me ask you guys a question, right? It sounds like on, on some level, multiplayer was intended for this game, whether or not they implement it or not remains to be seen. But if they do implement like maybe a four player or six player, uh, you know, ability to have multiplayer and interact with other people, 
would that add more replayability to the game, you guys think? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, what? I missed it. I was paying attention <laughs> to something else. Um, yeah, I mean, multiplayer would be huge for this game. If I could get together with you guys and explore the galaxy together, if, like the things that we found and, could, you know, like the discoveries we made, we could enjoy together. That's Honestly, I enjoy this game much more when I'm streaming it than when I'm playing it myself because I get to share those explore those discoveries and that exploration with my stream. So it's it's just more fun to do things with with friends, you know. Yeah. Moving on, Nintendo has filed a patent this week for a handheld device with detachable controllers, suggesting the previous NX rumors could be true. Official patent. This is uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Did, did they show images in the patent? Yes, there are images. Oh, I gotta fucking see that because that's the thing that's been really eating away at my brain. How they're gonna implement two controllers on this thing, but somehow make it feel natural when you're playing. You know, as the single player kind of experience, you take off the right or the left. I gotta see that, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for the NX light. Light. Or the NX plus. <laughs> Already assuming things that aren't even existing yet, bro. It's gonna be come on, come out. on. You know, there's gonna be a, another <laughs> one of these things. Every I'm waiting for the NX Advance. How many how many Game Boys and DXs and, and the new 3DS? 3DSs. The new 3DS. Like how many yeah. of these things have been there? Like a new one comes out every two years. That makes me so mad. I own everything you guys just said. <laughs> <laughs> a I Game Boy Pocket. Me. Oh fuck, yeah. there's a Game Boy Pocket Game color Boy now. SD, God damn it. Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. <laughs> this thing's I got, got six colors. <laughs> There's so many of them. Yeah. Oh, now there's one that has it's gold like Link's shield. Ah, oh, shit! I gotta buy that one. <laughs> That's what my son got. Mm -hmm. Damn it! <laughs> Nintendo is a genius. They make the same shit and slap a different color or a new button on it, and everybody uh -huh. goes out and buys. Oh, yeah, all they gotta do is they got all they gotta do is put like Mario and Luigi on the fucking thing. I'm like, it oh. <laughs> Mario on it. Ooh. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> hey, man. They got me so many times with that shit. I'm, I'm looking at these new uh, uh, graphics that they put on the 3DSs, and you want them so bad. Oh, my God. I, there was a guy. I was watching YouTube. But you know how I like watching people's fucking setup videos. I was watching a guy. He had all of the Nintendo GameCubes, every different color. And there was, I, I guess, too. some really rare ones. He had like no, gold and orange and like all the colors from like all around the world. It was pretty cool. Oh, but I mean, I, you talk about like a worthless investment. God damn. That's just throwing your money out the window. <laughs> <laughs> you see his eyes? <laughs> Man, look, I got three of them and uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty worthless. And so you can hook them up, play multiplayer, can't you? Yeah, you, well, you need the uh, the Game Boy Connect. Well, I don't fucking know. It's been <laughs> a long time. You need to plug time. it into potato for it to work. <laughs> you can plug it into potato. <laughs> <laughs> make me feel right, bad, right. okay? I'm wearing a damn Nintendo <laughs> shirt today. Shit. Oh, I feel totally shit. underdressed. Xbox <laughs> One surpa uh, sales surpassed PS4 for the first time in 10 months in the uh, in the NBD for the month of July. Ten How big months. a... Did they give the exact numbers? Oh, you know, Microsoft don't do... They don't play that shit. No, they We've don't had do that. We've 400 <laughs> billion Xbox Live hours. That's what they'll do. Yeah, or, well, the I MPD mean, does shit. that shit, though. What did the MPD say? Xbox Ones. So, yeah. They outsold the PlayStation. They, I mean, huh. Microsoft does not provide actual console sale numbers. Yeah, but the MPD grabs them from, like, estimates. Well, every article that I read, including the one that went up on my channel, didn't have actual numbers. All they have is how many hours people enjoyed having their Xbox Ones on. Yeah, there's no numbers on this. It's just watching uh, 4K Netflix. <laughs> yeah, real shit. That's yeah. really what it was. <laughs> so, uh, congratulations to, to Microsoft. It's been a long time coming. Uh, no Man's Sky launched this week on PC with many people reporting frame rate issues, crashes, and overall poor optimization compared to the PlayStation 4 version. God damn you, PC. Can't get anything right. This is a so case of Sony. Paid a lot of money to get that game developed on a PS4, and it was clearly the lead development platform. Hopefully, very quickly, Hello Games can get this thing shaped up for the PC. I think this was the reason that it launched later on the PCs, because they probably knew that there were these issues. Uh, yeah. And they might have wanted to delay it a little longer, even. Uh, because it, it does... It does I, there are people... Well, there are people who are playing it on PC that are actually having 
fine performance. It really depends on your personal setup. Um, and it does look better on a PC. Uh, of course. You can, yeah, you can uh, upgrade your field of view. There's a lot of... You, aiming is much easier. Anybody who's played this game knows that the aiming is kind of ridiculous in this game. Yeah, yeah. Field of view, that's another thing, actually, that I'm not huge on the PS4 version. It's Give a it to me, Ronnie. Give that. it to me. Really? I just gave it to you. He, okay, yeah, he just handed it to you, and you dropped it. You it dropped great. it like a big sack of yeah. turds. Pretty disappointing. Well, I, was asking, I was asking for it as he gave it to me. <laughs> yeah. God damn. That's not how sex works. You don't ask for it while they're giving it to you. That's not how that well, works. That's Some true. Point. Robbie yeah. nailed that one on the head, too. Yeah, you're right, Robbie. <laughs> I'm still a virgin, but trust me. I Once you're it. getting it, you stop asking for it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's but the shortly funny? thereafter, you start asking for it again. <laughs> you got that right. Like really quick. <laughs> Fifteen minutes. Yeah. yeah don't minutes. ask for it ever. Is giving it to you? Bad Fifteen idea. minutes. So our last little bit of fucking news for today's show: Final Fantasy 15 has reportedly been delayed to sometime in November. Damn it! God, Why did they wait till the, they wait till the last possible moment to delay the game for an extra month? When two months. When was it supposed to come out? Two months. It was September, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, September thirtieth. Oh yeah, September thirtieth. I'm thinking October. Wow, that's disappointing. Yeah, we've well, really broken up a lot. Once a month, man. The game's only been in development for ten fucking years. I mean, <laughs> you know, let's just let's add a couple more months onto that. Yeah, you know, it's a month and a day. You know, who really cares? They can wait a little. At longer. that point, if it's gonna get pushed till November, I'd almost wait till February or something. Give it a nice open window. Yeah, I wouldn't want it going against the fall lineup. Like that's, I think February yeah. would definitely be a better idea. I think it's going to sell like gangbusters, man. I think Briar's going to buy it too. Oh, I, I'd like yes. to see that. Look at, the, I see a twinkle. <laughs> Look, that's, that's death in his eyes. He said, "Hell no, I'm not buying that <laughs> fucking thing." That's something I'm really excited about. I think that I, I don't mind if developers hold a game to make it, you know, their vision. They want to make sure it's what they really envision it being. For for everything I've seen about this game, it looks amazing. So, but a ten year vision for this, like, hey man, you know, I've got like an eighteen year vision for each one of my kids, and hopefully it doesn't get fucked up. <laughs> so sometimes, when you put it like that, suddenly it makes a hell of a lot more sense. <laughs> he got that right. So sometimes, wow. man, it it works out in time. Yeah, it works out. Look how it worked out so well for Duke Nukem. Yeah, well, you know uh, that yeah, yeah. that parent that parent really? went to the strip club every night and didn't give a fuck about Duke. <laughs> that's, that's what happened. Even in real. Oh no! <laughs> Are you saying that's bad? <laughs> hey man, I'm not judging anybody. I'm not judging. I'm not, We're doing I'm a lot judging. judging right now. I'll tell you that. Yeah, that's judging. not true. You know, is that it for your news? Family, your family time is your family time, Brian. Whatever hey, at want. least I'm spending it with my kids. You know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, this place is awesome. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> wow. Get out of here. Hey, go fetch me a beer. <laughs> That's all you're useful for. And tell your sister she's almost time to come out on stage. <laughs> this is going to be the best fucking show ever. <laughs> for you guys who stayed to the end, that's who you stayed for. That was God. Oh, man. I can't, I can't wait to watch this show so I can go right to the end. That was fucking awesome. Go no, fetch your sister. Tell her it's her time to get on stage. <laughs> wow! Amazing. Now Child coming to the stage, <laughs> Beastly. <laughs> <laughs> Put your dollars out for Beastly. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> oh man! All right, we should wrap <sighs> this up before it goes any further. Before we get banned. <laughs> Where do we go? What happened? What happened? <laughs> is that it for news? Was that it? That's, that our last it story? Man. That's our last story. All right. It was a good show, guys. I really enjoyed talking about No Man's Sky. We had good news to talk about. I, I like it, man. Fuck good. Oh, I totally forgot we talked about No Man's Sky after this current <laughs> topic. You know, that's all I remember <laughs> right now. <laughs> Robbie, parenting is tough, man. <laughs> it is, man. 
It's tough. Tough out there. Have kids. Yeah. yeah, that's what we all say. <laughs> we all said that I at one it. point, Robbie. I, I did it. too. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> oh, oh <God. sighs> all right, guys. So, let's wrap uh, this one up. <laughs> thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, make sure you leave your comments below. Let us know how you like No Man's Sky, and we'll be with you down there, and we'll converse and, and talk to you about it. Yeah, I want to hear what you guys' experience has been. It, you know, now that it's been out for almost a week, too, it's like, are you getting bored with it? Are you finding it more and more compelling as you play? Uh, are you going to put it down, wait for, like, some updates to happen and see if you can come back to it? Like, I'm really interested. What are you guys thinking about it? I think I'm going to put it down soon. I'm really, I'm just starting to feel, like, burnt out on it. Drop I mean, it like it's hot. Break. That's what I'm going to do. Like Did that hot. happen, like, during the show, Robbie? <laughs> what, just drop it like it's hot? No, I didn't no. do that. No, I'm saying at the beginning of the show, you seem really into it, like you want to get back into it at the end of the show. Well, I think I'm done with this shit. I'm just fucking, uh, yeah. <laughs> but Robbie goes through games fast, though, too. He, yeah, well, he plays games, yeah. and then he moves on to the next game pretty quick. You know, and he, he beats them. Like, he, he finishes these games. Yeah, no, I yeah. marathon a lot of things. Yeah. So. Well, we didn't get a chance to uh, talk about this week's Game Club game. Oh, right. But be sure to... Be sure to follow Briar Rabbit on Twitter to find out what their game is this week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shit, yeah, we don't have a game. Uh, don't worry. Uh, we're mm. going to figure it out. <laughs> we probably should have thought about that beforehand. Oh, well. Maybe so. <laughs> uh, All right, guys. Thanks for watching. This has been an episode, I don't know, of Beastly Thought Show Live. 121. 121. 121. Oh, yeah. No Beastie Man's Sky Edition. No Man's Sky Edition, we're calling this one. Thanks for yes. watching. Uh, hopefully, I'll get this one up on YouTube within like the next three days. <laughs> It'll be up before Friday. Right? Last time, I could not export it from Twitch to YouTube, so I had to I had to download it uh, and then upload it again. But that's a big-ass file, and, uh, you know, I'm busy. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. You know what we can promise, though? It will be up before 2017. Uh, unless Square is, uh, <laughs> I just Maybe announced my new partnership oh. deal with Square. Uh, we're Square Enix. We're going to partner up on the Beastly Thoughts live show. Uh, so the next episode, episode 122, should be live in approximately 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be a labor of love. <laughs> it might take a while. Labor It'll of be love. Worth it, we promise you. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs>